So, of course, into the Ahoy post bag comes this question uh, and proof that you, Dick Beaumont, and me, Dick Durham, are not just banging the drum for Kraken, although, of course, we're here to do that. But um, this is about other boats. This is about the second-hand market, really. And it comes from um, Mary Bonney. Mm. And she simply asks, I would love to buy a Kraken 50, but I do not have the money. So I'm on the lookout for a suitable second-hand blue water yacht. Which do designs do you think are suitable? Well, we've both got, I know, plenty of views on this, Dick, but please. Yeah, you know, you. it comes down to these two, three questions, three, three issues. In my view, has it got an integral keel? Has it got a fully protected rudder? And has it got a heavily well laid up hull and keel? If it answers all those three questions, then it does. And there is a lot of boats out there still, and they will be there, I'm convinced, for a long time yet, because they were built well in the first place. Just address uh, the issue of design. So you've got fin and skeg arrangement with a full protected rudder from the skeg, or as in your own Betty 2, uh, a long keel and a protected rudder that is a keel hung rudder. So they're, they're the two choices. E either of those boats, e either of those design uh, solutions are gonna work for blue water cruising. Yeah. Um, names, let's name a few. I recently went on to a very beautiful Hans Christian um, and uh, it was uh, 48 foot, he'd spent a fair bit of money bringing it back up to scratch and it was beautiful um, and that boat very compatible with the job of going off sailing around the world really no questions about it a heavy boat uh, took a fair bit of wind to get it going but you have to start from the safety principle. Yeah. I, if you're going to go and do this, it's not like going for a weekend sail. It's no. not like going for a week sail. You're going to do this for, for several years yeah. and you have to have a boat that is bombproof. So the Tayanas, any of the Tayanas, every one of them ever built had a fully integral keel and a fully skegged rudder. Uh, and they are great boats. My previous yacht was a, a Tayana 58, um, and I sailed 150,000 miles in that boat, and she was bomb-proof. So any one of the Tayanas, um, even going back to uh, a Tayana uh, 37, they built 600 of them. Did they? Tayana 37, a uh, beautiful little uh, double ender, which was designed by Bob Perry, beautiful little boat. Uh, and, and I saw, believe it or not, Dick, I saw uh, hull number four. When oh, I was, really? Yeah, when I was sailing, yeah. I, was, I was sailing in, uh, in, in uh, the Fiji Islands and I uh, rode across and, and because of the connection with Tayana, I rode across and asked about the boat. He was most proud, it was in lovely condition. Um, and you can realistically go back and buy an old um, blue stripe down them every time. Oh yeah, Halberg Rassi. Halberg Rassi. Yeah, yeah. So you can go back. You can go back a few years. Yeah. Probably no more than fifteen years when they were, in my view, building really real blue water boats to, and buy a Halberg Rassi. Just check it out. Has it got the integral kill, or is it after that when they switched? Yeah. Um, Old oysters, yeah. Old oysters were the same, um, but there's a, there's a, a, a another one. Hylas, you really oh, great right. integral yeah. keels sail very well. They've now switched to bolt on keels and unprotected rudders, as 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 everybody as you know. Yes. Um, so there's there's really really some of the uh, contessas, the contessa and the Nicholson range, Nicholson range yeah. stick, yeah. Yeah. Rivals, yeah, Bowmans, yeah. You know, and all these boats have survived, you know. I tell you what's interesting, and you'll pick up, uh, as you remember, our good friend recently was looking at potentially a Nicholson and, uh, or potentially a Contessa, yeah. uh, and there are dozens and dozens yeah. of, out, of them out there, and you can pick them up for under 30K. Absolutely. Under 30, and that's going to be a small boat. Small it's going boat. to be a very basic yeah. boat. And that's one of the things that must be kind of understood. In the in the European market, 
there's not too many uh, boats with integral keels still available that are over 40, 45 no, feet. The Nicks, some of the Nicholsons yeah, of the are still out there. What about the Amel? The Amels of some of the, uh, the Amels, Amels? Yeah, it's, well, they've got a partially. Uh, yeah. the, the old ones, the Super Mar Maramu, have got a partially right. uh, bolt-on keel. Up, yeah. You know, it's a long stub yeah, and, and the keel on the bottom. Yeah. So that makes them a big question mark. But yeah. they at least did have full uh it, that they'd have a skeg, yeah. skegged rudder but now of course they, they also twin, have gone now yeah twin twin unprotected rudders yeah. so that's them out in my book anyway but um no there's 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 a lot of boats out there that you can you can pick up and for not very much money no. so you know the message is and i fully understand that not everybody can afford to buy a kraken if you can it's a great solution but if you can't yeah, just still do it. Go and do it, because I tell you, it's yeah. been. You've had fantastic life sailing, so yeah, have I. Yeah, enjoyed it. There's, and there's no better way, you know, of seeing this world from the deck of your own sailboat. I'll, I'll tell you a funny thing here, and I don't quite. I, I've been thinking about this. The the proper blue water yachts continued in production or to, in the market in the U.S much longer than they did in the UK. Yeah, did they? I think that's because the production boat market, as you know, and still today, is European. Yeah, and I think all the yards that we know the names of got wiped out yeah. by the production boat market taking their their place in the market and losing you know, enough uh, sales sure. to, to, to make them non-viable. But if you go to the States, there's a lot of double-enders still out there. There's a lot of boats that are capable of going, have got those three characteristics. Yes, yes. Because here's the point. If it's got a bad, if the engine's shot, if the rig's shot, if the generator's screwed, if the air, if it hasn't got air con, if the, you can fix all of that. Yeah. Yeah, you, right. cannot you cannot fix, fix it. Hole, no. You can that boat's not fixable no. if you've got those the vulnerabilities that uh, no, right. that, that I'm talking about. And and in terms of uh, thickness of hull, it is is very crude. Is a very crude me method of, of of establishing is it well laid, uh, well well laid up. But yeah, anything really under about ten mil. Mm, it's going to be too light. It's going to start flexing. And you're going to know from the displacement just how thick it is anyway. Well, no, it's a rough no, guy. Dick, because of course you can make a bigger, well, heavier keel well, and the true. displacement's yeah. still there. Yeah. So, you know, good luck with, with those when you hit stuff. Yeah. And you will hit stuff because that's another thing, you know. Not, and I don't just mean containers out there, which there's loads of those, but there's whales, there's logs. <laughs> it's all manner of flotsam and jets. There's unlit fishing yeah. boats towing huge hawsers as you found. Yeah, that. well, exactly. Yeah. So you know, no, no. I mean, there's a lot of boats out there, and and if anybody is any viewer is watching this and is unsure, wants you know wants a bit of help and wants a, a view on it. You know, please write into us, and and come, come I'll, I'll be delighted, Absolutely. delighted to say to you. Look, you know, I think that's that's. I can't. I'm not going to go and survey the boats for all. Well, don't no, misunderstand. It's not. Like, but I'm just going to. So can you? You can, you can say just say yes or no. Yeah, this no, ticks a box. No, yeah. it don't. In fact, just to, we should mention, of course, that again, a good friend of Kraken, of course, is John Kretschmer, yeah. who sailed the Contessa Thirty Two. <laughs> Admittedly, this is a bit extreme from New York uh, to San Francisco, going round Cape Horn the wrong way. In fact, it's called Cape Horn to Starboard. Yeah. So there you go. Um, uh, yeah, yeah you, you know, I mean, the thing is, my first boat, Dick, was an Endurance 35. That was, which I, which was, I built in 1980. That was, a, you know, that was considered quite a big boat. Yeah. And, and a 32, in that day, 30 foot, was cause I don't know why thirty foot, but yeah. thirty foot was considered aspirational. That's going. That's <laughs> going to be no thirty foot was considered. That's a boat that is capable of going off and sailing yeah. around the world. Because all boats that were thirty foot and above, yes. before you got the production boats, before the saddlers, before the westerlies, yeah. all changed that market. Yes. All boats were were built to to go and do that. Right. You know, I'm mm. sure of that. And also, of course, we did do a feature on this very subject in 
Ocean Sailor, and you can find that at this link. Yeah, we listed quite a yeah, lot of did. boats. I think yeah. we listed 30 or 40 Something different. Like that. But yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, I bet you there are 50 boat, 50 I'm boat sure. designs out there that I'm you sure could reasonably are. take off and yeah, sail I would have thought in so. around the yeah, world. Yeah, definitely.